Rista, goddess of healing is given an S-class difficulty level world. To become one of the great goddesses, she is required to save this world from the demon king. But, because the difficulty level is so high she is in total despair. She searches for the best young man, who can help her in this quest. However, with their level being low, she got fed up and throws the papers. One of the papers falls onto her face. When she looked, Rista is shocked. The stats of this candidate is way higher for a level 1 hero. The candidate's name is Seiya. She immediately performs the summoning ritual and summons the hero. The hero finally arrives. Seeing how handsome he is, Rista started dreaming of them being together. But then tell herself that love between a human and a goddess is forbidden. Rista explains to Seiya why he is being summoned. Seiya was suspicious. He asks Rista that if she is a goddess then why doesn't she save the world herself? Rista told him, that the world is created by gods for humans. And that is why it is the duty of another human to save the world. She opens a portal and tells him to come with her. Along the way, she will tell him everything. Seiya refused. He tells Rista that he will not go anywhere suspicious just because a goddess is saying. Rista assures Seiya that his stats are higher than average heroes. And with her being a goddess of healing, he will not die. Seiya tells her that he doesn't trust a supporting character. He doubts whether Rista would even be able to heal his small wounds. Rista started to get frustrated and tells herself, how can a human treat a goddess like this? Seiya takes off his t-shirt and tells Rista, there is a condition. Rista interprets the condition for the forbidden love. However, Seiya started doing push-ups. He tells Rista, he needs some time before he goes to that dangerous place. Rista suddenly remembers that she has overlooked one of his crucial traits. It was his impossibly cautious personality. Rista brings some rice balls for him to eat. But Seiya was too cautious to eat. He suspects that it might be poisoned, so he tells Rista to first eat herself and check. Rista started crying and tells him that she doesn't have any reason to poison him. But eat anyways to prove him. She provides him with basic amenities and gives him a buzzer. Rista tells him to press this when he is ready. Thinking he would press the buzzer in two to three days, Rista wait patiently. But even after four days, he hasn't pressed it. After seven days, she was about to lose control but the buzzer finally rings. She ran quickly to check for him. As soon as she enters, seeing Seiya's abs made her nose bleed. Rista was shocked to see Seiya's stats. She never imagined just by doing push-ups he would get to the 15 levels. She quickly opens a portal to Gaybranda. This time Seiya was ready, as he says his catchphrase, ready perfectly. When they reached there, both of them went to the nearest town, Adona to buy some equipment. She hands him some gold coins. In the shop, he selects steel armor. And asks for three sets. Rista immediately stops him, telling him that he doesn't need this many. Seiya explains to her that the first is to wear, the second is spare, and the third is a spare in case the first spare loses. Rista took the coins back and selected the armor herself. After they bought 50 herbs, Seiya went to an open field to practice his fighting skills. There they found a slime. Rista tells Seiya that slimes are the weakest. Seiya ignoring what she said, uses atomic split slash. With just one strike he vaporizes the slime. Rista tells him that he didn't need to use a powerful attack on a slime. Seiya thought the slime might still be alive. So, he uses his other skill, Hell's Fire. He keeps on using them multiple times. Finally, when he stopped, Rista suggests going to the next town. But just then, one of the four heavenly kings of Demon Lord's forces, Chaos Machina arrives. Rista was shocked. She didn't expect to have an encounter with a high-level demon this early. When she scanned her stats, Chaos was of 66 level. Way powerful than Seiya. Rista tells Seiya to retreat but realizes that he had already left. Angrily she runs after him saying how can you leave a beautiful goddess like me behind. While they were running, Seiya told Rista to create a portal to Divine Realm. Rista quickly creates it but, was about to be caught by Chaos. So, Seiya uses Hell's Fire to surround Chaos in a ring of fire. They finally escape. Seiya told her to get out and give him some time to level up. Two days have passed since then. When Rista checks the crystal ball to see the situation of Adona. She saw Chaos killing the people. And announcing, if the hero and the goddess take more time to come, she will kill more people. Worried Rista went to Seiya to make him aware of the situation. Even after being aware of the situation, Seiya tells Rista, he needs more time. 
Even though the time in divine realm flows 100 times slower than the gay branda, they still need to hurry. Because every 10 minutes chaos is killing a human. Saya didn't care, he told Rista to leave him alone. Rista was emotional, she told Saya that she regretted the decision of summoning him. As she was about to leave the room. While wearing his armor, Saya tells Rista, It is not that I don't care about those people, it is just that if I die then every single human there will die. Rista checks Saya's stats and was amazed at how much he has leveled up in such a short amount of time. Saya says his catchphrase, ready perfectly and both of them teleport to Gay Branda. Chaos was about to kill a human, but in the nick of time Saya arrives and uses his new skill, Wind Blade. As a result, he saved the man. Chaos when scanning Saya's stats, couldn't believe how much Saya has leveled up in just a few minutes. But she has a power up to her leave. Chaos releases her true form. With this, her stats now are three times more than Saya's. Rista couldn't believe how strong Chaos is. As of Zhao's current stats, she is stronger than the Demon King of a difficulty D-class world. Chaos told Saya, now with just one hit she could split his body. As she was about to hit Saya, Rista has already accepted Saya's death. But as the dust clears up, Saya was still standing. Rista was shocked, how can a level 21 hero withstand a demon with these low stats? She checked Saya's stats again and found he is using a fake out to hide his real stats. She forces her godly powers to see through the lock. When Rista sees Saya's real stats she had her jaw dropped. Saya's stats are 10 times more than earlier. She wondered how did he manage to level up this much in a such short amount of time. But then realizes that Saya from the start was hiding his real stats. This means that when they first encounter Chaos, he was already way stronger than her. And just as expected Saya uses Phoenix Drive and turns Chaos to ashes with ease. The people were very happy and thanked Saya for his heroic achievement. Saya ignoring their praise starts collecting Chaos's ashes and uses the hidden skill Maximum Inferno on them. As a result, the whole town burned to a crisp. The village mayor begged Saya to leave the town. With this, they return to the Divine Realm for him to level up more. In the Divine Realm, while Saya is working out, Rista is with Arya, who is one of the great goddesses. Rista tells her about Saya's fight against Chaos Machina. Rista is very inspired by Arya and asks how she managed to save all 300 worlds. With a sad look, Arya told her that out of those 300, she was unable to save one. And that too was only difficulty level B world. Just then, Saya enters the room. Arya drops the cup she was holding and went to Saya to introduce herself. Rista got jealous because it looks to her that Arya is captivated by Saya's handsome face. Arya asks why did he come here? Saya tells her, no matter how much he exercises he can't level up. Rista was happy after hearing this and suggests he should go to Gay Branda and fight some monsters. Saya told her that it is too risky and he needs some other options. Arya suggests, he should train with the god of Divine Blade, Circeus who is skilled in sword fighting. Saya liked the idea. They went to Circeus to allow Saya to train with him. Circeus accepted it but, beforehand warned Saya that it is not easy for a human to withstand against a god. Saya responded, don't blame me if I leave you in tears. And don't you dare leave the training in the middle. Circeus was offended to hear this from a human and said, I will show you my levels in the training. And then they left. After the first day of training, Rista went to Circeus to ask for an update. Circeus told her she need not worry, Saya have the potential but still is far behind him in strength. After the second day, Circeus tells Rista that Saya has gained a nice amount of power but if Circeus uses his actual power against Saya then Saya is no match. After the third day, when Rista went to Circeus, she found that he is sitting in the corner. When asked about the training, with a tired look, he told her that the training is going okay. On the fourth day of training, to make rice balls, Rista went to take some nori. But unexpectedly found Circeus hiding there. Circeus told Rista to not tell anyone about his location. Rista was a bit confused and asked for more details. Circeus told her that her hero is sick. Saya is already three times stronger than him but won't let him rest until he becomes 100 times stronger. For days, he hasn't slept well, because Saya doesn't want to waste any time. Just then Saya arrives and tells Circeus to come back to training. Circeus was so traumatized that he threw his divine blade into the ocean. And swear to not pick up another sword. But anyway Saya drags him to the training. Rista is called up by Ishtar, a very high ranked goddess. Ishtar tells Rista to go to the next town immediately. 
Using her precognition ability she tells Rista that there they will find two allies who will help them in their journey. When they reach the town of Simul, everyone was leaving from there. Rista asks them the reason. One of them tells that the main castle has been destroyed by the huge horde of undead. And now they are coming to this town. Saya asks Rista what are the weakness of the undead. Rista suggests fire and holy water are effective against them. Saya goes to the nearest shop and orders 1000 bottles of holy water. Rista stopped him and bought 10 bottles. They reach the church where they are introduced to Mash and Alulu who are descendants of Dragonkin. The priest tells Saya that from now on these two will accompany them. Before the priest says anything else, Saya uses the holy water on him. Rista was shocked and angry but soon the priest started to turn into an undead. Saya quickly cuts the priest into pieces. Saya uses Maximum Inferno to get rid of the body but obviously in the process got rid of the whole church. Mash and Alulu impressed by Saya's strength introduce themselves personally. He uses the holy water on all of them to just make sure they are not undead. Even at Rista. After scanning both of their stats, Saya with a disgusted face says, I don't need them. Saya told them, they will only slow him down with their low stats. Soon the knights arrive after hearing the explosion. They asked what happened here. The nun told them that the priest was an imposter. So the hero takes care of him. She told the knights that there are 10,000 undead approaching this town. The knights were shocked. Even for an army of 300, these are too much. Saya approached the knight and asks for a reward if they want him to help them. The knight told Saya, he will be provided with 1,000 gold coins. Saya said, very well. Now write this in this piece of paper. He then proceeds to go alone against the horde. The knights couldn't believe Saya was going alone and told him to wait. As soon, more knights will come to join him. Saya told him he don't need people who will slow him down. And told the knights along with Mash and Aluliu to protect the town. With his flight skill, he flies toward the horde leaving Rista behind. Rista was speechless and uses her godly powers to bring out her wings. With this she chases Saya. But Saya was too fast for her. Seeing Rista is left behind, he went back to take her. Rista started blushing, thinking Saya has fallen for her and tries to kiss him. However, Saya speeds up leaving Rista in shambles. When they reach the place where the undead are. Saya uses his new overpowered skill, Meteor Strike. With just one hit he vaporizes all 10,000 undead. Rista was impressed to see how powerful the spell is. She wonders, if the Heavenly King, Death Magia is there, the spell is enough to kill him. Saya uses Meteor Strike again just to make sure they are gone for good. After his second spell, Saya holds his head and said, he uses too much of his MP. Rista was worried for Saya, after all, he uses two powerful spells continuously. She asks Saya, how much MP is left? While holding his head, Saya replied, out of 15,000, only 13,500 MP is left. After hearing this, Rista was speechless. They went back to the town. Worried Alulu went to Rista to ask whether she has seen Mash. Because since the church incident, she hasn't seen him. Rista with Alulu went to Saya's room for help. There Saya shows Rista a platinum sword he has created with his new skill, Synthesize. Surprised Rista asks, how did he manage to do it? Saya replies, by combining two ordinary swords and a goddess hair which he found in Rista's room. Soon after a parcel for Saya arrives. Suspecting it might be a bomb, Saya tells Rista to open it. Inside the parcel was a mirror. But not an ordinary one. Inside the mirror, Mash was tied up and tortured. Death Magia appears. He tells Saya that he will torture this boy to death because Saya killed his undead. Since Death Magia is in an unknown place, it would take a lot of time to find it. Saya tells Rista to open a portal to Divine Realm and uses Dimension Blade to cut his hand. Because time flows 100 times slower in the Divine Realm, Saya uses this opportunity to make a plan. He then went to the Divine Realm and asked Ishtar to teleport them to the place where Mash is being kept. After reaching the castle, Saya easily defeats Death Magia and saves Mash. Alulu was very happy after Mash woke up from his injury. Saya enters the room. He tells Mash and Alulu that they can join him but in return they will carry his belongings. Both of them were very happy. Mash tells Saya that he wants to take him to Dragon's Den. Alulu explains that according to legends, a hero alongside two dragon kins will come to this place. Here they will receive the mightiest weapon to defeat the demon lord. 
Seiya tells them they will first go to the Divine Realm. There Seiya went to find Circeus. Circeus was in the cafeteria learning to cook. When he saw Seiya coming, he immediately hid. Seiya tells Circeus that the person he is supposed to train is Mash not him. Seeing Mash is weaker than him. Circeus got excited and took him to the training. After Mash, Rista handed a Lulu to the goddess of fire, Hestika, and requested her to teach her flame magic. After a Lulu it was Seiya who wanted to find someone to train with. On the way, Rista accidentally bumped into the goddess of destruction, Valkyrie. Valkyrie got angry and told her to watch her steps. Seiya asks Rista about Valkyrie because he sensed tremendous power from her. Rista tells him after all she is the strongest goddess of the divine realm. She warns Seiya to not talk to her, as she gets offended if a human said anything to her. However, Seiya already went to ask her to train him. He called her exhibitionist for her outfit. This makes Valkyrie angry and she threatens Seiya that she'll kill him. Just then Arya comes. With her persuasion, Valkyrie stopped and left. In a casual tone, Arya said, I've told you many times Seiya not to be this reckless. Seiya asks Arya, are you casual with everyone or just me? Arya apologizes and knowing that Seiya needs someone to train with, she took him to the goddess of war, Adonella. Arya tells Seiya that she is way stronger than Circeus and would be of great help. With a creepy tone, Adonella said that she would be glad to help a human. On the third day, it is time for their departure to Gaybranda. Rista first went to pick Mash. She was amazed to see Mash's new stats. She then went to Alulu. There when she scanned her. Alulu Sats wasn't any different from before. Hestika tells Rista that this girl has no talent for flame magic. And it is better for her if she gives up on flame magic. At last when Rista went to bring Seiya. He told her that Adonella has told him to wait. Soon Adonella with a totally different look came running to Seiya. She hugs him. She gives him a cake that she has made and asks Seiya to take her on his adventure because she wants to be with him forever. Rista was in shock. She was wondering what these two were doing in the training. Seiya bluntly rejects the cake and told her that no way he will spend his life with her forever. As they were about to leave, Adonella in a rage started destroying everything. Seiya ignoring her says his catchphrase, ready perfectly and then went inside the portal. When they get inside the cave, a voice tells them to step into the magic circle after which they will be teleported to the dragon village. And here they will get the mightiest weapon, Ixasian. After teleportation, there they meet Lagos. He guides them to their leader. Great mother of dragons, Levi welcomes them. She first transforms Mash into a dragonude to reveal his true powers and tells him that with enough training he can become a dragon god. Alulu asks the dragon mother on how she can transform too. Levi tells her unfortunately she cannot transform because she has a more important role to serve. Levi tells that Alulu will be sacrificed and will turn into Ixasian, the mightiest weapon. Everyone was shocked, worried Rista asks whether there is any other alternative. Levi tells them, it is the only way the hero can defeat the demon king. She tells them how 70% of this world is under demon king's control. And if they didn't take any action sooner, the dragon village along with other towns and nations will be destroyed. Sad Alulu accepts her fate and agrees to be sacrificed. Mash protests and asks whether instead of Alulu he can be sacrificed. Levi tells them the ritual requires a female dragon kin blood and flesh. So Mash cannot replace Alulu. At the village before the ceremony. Rista asks Seiya to do something about it. Seiya with a cold face replies, it is very obvious what needs to be done. There is nothing for me to do. Alulu hearing this response got emotional and told him that he is absolutely right. Just before the ritual the, dragons organize a feast for everyone. Two dragon kids offer Seiya, Rista, and mash some cookies. Seiya was about to reject them but Rista tells him that just eat them only this time. Just after they eat the cookie, Levi announces the commencement of the ritual. Alulu with two bodyguards behind her walks on the path which was created by the first dragon emperor. Levi explains after Alulu reaches the end point she will jump from there and soon will transform into Ixasian. As she was about to reach the end, Seiya from behind kicks the guards. And said, if he let Alulu transform into a sword then she can't carry her bags. Rista and Mash suddenly got paralyzed. Levi tells them she already knew this could happen so she poisoned them. However seeing Seiya being unharmed, Levi was in shock. In a surprised tone, she said, but I saw you eat the cookies. Seiya tells that just after he ate he vomited them. 
because he suspected it might be poison. Angry Levi turns into Dragon God with insane stats, especially very high defense. But Seiya was already prepared as he take out Dragon Killer. The Dragon Killer was made by combining a platinum sword with Masha's and Rista's hair. Seeing the Dragon Killer's sword, Levi got scared and activated the curse on the necklace that Alulu is wearing. After three minutes, the time will be over and Alulu will die. Worried Rista asks, but don't you need her for the sacrifice? Levi told her that she only needs Alulu's blood and flesh, irrespective of whether she is dead or alive. As Seiya is about to kill her, Levi unlocks the wall. With this, her defense is almost impenetrable. Seiya takes out another dragon killer, he combines them with the eternal sword skill that he learned from Adonella. But even with them, Levi HP was barely reducing. But Seiya's plan was to push till the end of the cliff. As Levi realizes Seiya's plan she undo the wall. But as soon as she did it, Seiya uses a double wind blade to destroy Levi's wings and push her through the cliff. And soon after Levi turns into Ixation. Because the conditions of a female dragonkin flesh and blood met, which Levi already possesses. Seiya tells the villagers that it is a win-win for both of us. As he saved a Lulu and they completed the ritual. The villagers were in a bit of shock as their leader passed away but agrees that it was for the best. Mash hugs Alulu as he reunites with her. Just before they leave, Rista tells Seiya that she knows the sword is not Exasian because she can tell from its sacred energy. Seiya tells her that it was the best possible way to escape from there. As they were about to leave the cave, the knights from before blocked the entrance. They are Roseguard Imperial Knights. Their captain, Rosalie is fighting against the demons and they are here to request the hero to help them. Seiya with Rista, Mash, and Alulu went to the place where the captain is fighting. There they got to know the demon in charge is Beelbub, who has incredible speed. Seiya witnesses how patientless the captain is. Without any strategy she is just charging them as a result the soldiers are being slaughtered. They went to the captain. Rosalie thinking they have just arrived immediately orders her guards to attack the demons to revenge for her soldiers' deaths. However, Carlo tells her to first retreat and have some rest to think. Rosalie agrees. Everyone gathers for the meeting in the fortress. Rosalie tells everyone that they don't need any strategy because she and the hero would be sufficient. The council is not happy with her decision. Seiya stood up and tell them that he is leaving. The whole council is shocked. Rosalie is angry and wants to attack as soon as possible. Seiya tells her after carefully observing their movements he is not ready yet. Rosalie was devastated to know the hero was already there when her soldiers were being slaughtered. She blames their death on him because what kind of hero after witnessing human's death doesn't help them. Seiya bluntly tells Rosalie that because of her lack of strategy, the soldiers died. It's actually her who killed them. Rosalie gets angry and tries to slap Seiya. However, Seiya blocks it and slaps her back until she stops. Rosalie is swollen like a tomato. Cryingly she tells Seiya that she doesn't need him and going to attack the demon alone. Seiya without any delay went back to the divine realm. They went to the goddess of archery, Midas to learn archery. There she shows them her ability to shoot seven continuous arrows. Seiya was impressed and tells her to train him. Before they start, Midas tells him that a human can't shoot even five continuous arrows. Seiya replies, we'll see about that. Rista took Mash and Alulu to Arya where she took the responsibility to train them into her hands. Circeus alert Rista about Adonella. Since they left, she is in a berserk mode. Rista goes to Adonella's place. There her whole wall is painted with kill you. When she turns, Adonella was behind her waiting to kill Seiya. Rista tells her, Seiya didn't come with her this time. Adonella didn't react much. Rista leaves and quickly goes to Seiya and tells him to stay away from Adonella. Tomorrow she'll bring Mash and Alulu and from here only they will go to Gay Branda. Seiya was a bit confused because Adonella was standing behind Rista since she has arrived here. Adonella knew there is no way Rista would come back without Seiya and that's why she followed her. As she gets into her fighting stance, Seiya approaches her and tells her to comb her hair because it looks like a mess. Rista was worried and tells Seiya to run. However, Adonella melted and forgives Seiya. Rista couldn't believe it was this easy to calm the goddess of war. Rista goes to Arya to check Mash and Alulu's progress. Mash is partially able to release his dragon seal. And Alulu has learned support magic. With it, she can use delay and haste on the subject. Soon after with Seiya, they teleport to the fortress. 
Carlo tells them, Rosalie has gone alone to fight Beale Bub. Saya without any delay goes there. When they reach there, Rosalie is climbing up the tree. Saya is happy because now he can use Rosalie as bait. However, Beale Bub is alerted and takes her with him. Saya sent Rista to make sure she doesn't lose sight of Rosalie. Seeing Rista, Beale Bub understands the hero is also near. So he flies higher to avoid him. However, a shining arrow came toward Beale Bub. When he tries to dodge it, he drops Rosalie. But somehow Rista manages to catch her. Beale Bub was surprised to see the hero manages to shoot this far from the ground. Soon, another seven shining arrows are fired at Beale Bub. Rista was amazed to see a human breaking the limits. However, Beale Bub manages to dodge them all. Thinking he avoided Saya's best shot, Beale Bub finds Saya and went to kill him. But the arrows that Saya fired earlier transforms into birds and came back like a boomerang to kill Beale Bub. Later, Saya with the help of Alulu's haste finishes off the smaller flies and tells Mash to collect the bodies. After they were collected, Saya uses Hellfire to vaporize the remains. Before Rosalie leaves, she tells Saya about a legendary armor in the shrine near the village of Azale. With its help, he can defeat the demon lord. So, Saya with others goes to the village of Azale, but was shocked to witness its condition. The whole village was lit up in fire. When they went further inside, there they met Kiklapol, one of the four heavenly kings. Adamantoise is the demon he summoned from another world to destroy the legendary armor. And now with no legendary armor and sword, Saya's chance of defeating the demon lord is very slim. Kiklapol knows that he cannot defeat the hero, so he sacrifices himself to summon, a hyper-conceptual reaper, Kros Thanatos. Saya is not prepared for what is about to come, so he tells Rista to open the portal. Soon the summoning is completed and Kros Thanatos is summoned. Rista is shocked to see the stats are glitching, which means Thanatos' stats are actually over the edge. Saya uses double wind blade to attack the reaper. However, the reaper converts into two. Saya is in panic, he uses maximum inferno and asks Rista to quickly open the portal. Rista opens the portal and they went to the divine realm. However, the reaper starts to break through the dimensions and enter the divine realm. Rista is shocked and couldn't believe it is even possible. Saya is completely out of options and doesn't know how to counter it. Soon, three gods came to the rescue. However, the reaper easily defeats them. Seeing Saya is already running, Rista and the others start running too. More gods came to help but they are also defeated. Adanella is in front, so Saya asks her for help. Since she is a goddess of war, Rista believes Adanella can defeat the reaper. She uses ultimate eternal sword, but the reaper clones into its multiple. Adanella is also defeated. Since almost every god has been defeated, Saya's last option is Valkyrie. He lures the reaper to her and made him attack Valkyrie's painting. Valkyrie is pissed and attacks the reaper. However, Kros Thanatos is easily able to regenerate. Valkyrie started laughing and asks Ishtar to release her limit. Her stats are out of this world. Valkyrie uses her ultimate skill, Valhalla Gate. With this, the Reaper is caught inside the gate and is swallowed. As a side effect, Valkyrie started to lose a lot of blood. Because in exchange for using it, the Valhalla Gate demands the user's life force. But since she is immortal, this side effect doesn't affect her. Saya requests Valkyrie to teach him this skill. But due to its side effect, Valkyrie warns Saya that a human couldn't possibly learn it. He still insists on her. Valkyrie agrees and tells him to come to his room after 10 minutes. Mash and Alulu went to Arya to improve their stats. Rista is called up by Ishtar. She tells Rista about the last heavenly king preparing to attack Gabranda. So she and the hero needs to hurry. First, Rista brings Mash and Alulu who have improved significantly. And then she goes to Valkyrie's place to bring Saya. However, she is stunned to witness Valkyrie on top of Saya. Rista starts crying. Saya assures her that it is not what she is thinking. This is a part of the final training. Rista shows Saya a doll she has made out of her hair. Because Saya needs a lot of her hair for synthesis, this would help him. Everyone is disgusted to see it. Without any more delay, they go to Gabranda. A huge horde of demons is in front of the castle. The last heavenly king demands the mightiest warrior to come ahead. So, the Warmaster comes in front. Thinking he is just a weak old man, the demon starts laughing at the Warmaster. However, the Warmaster slashes down him into pieces. And using massive saint's light, the Warmaster vaporizes every demon. Seeing how powerful he is, Rista asks, why don't you defeat the demon lord by yourself? 
Before the Warmaster says anything, he is turned into an infant. Soon, Rosalie arrives and explains that her father is being cursed by the Demon Lord. She takes her father to the kingdom, while Seiya and others go to the town to shop for some gear and weapons. In the evening, Seiya is called up by the king. But before he met him, Rosalie requests Seiya to not accept her father's request in joining him in fighting the Demon Lord. Because he has very less time to live and wants his last few days to be peaceful. Seiya agrees. Because even though the king is strong, he doesn't want someone in his team who could die any minute. A guard notifies the king that survivors from the Demon Lord's army are attacking the capital. The king tries to go, but Seiya insists that he will go and wipe them out as quickly as possible. Seiya takes Mash and Alulu with him and tells Rista to stay here. The king and Rista have some private talk. He asks Rista whether she knows why gods and humans will not die in this world. Rista unknown of the fact, asks him the reason. The king explains that a god has two souls. One is called, the virtual soul which he or she carries. And the other one is the real soul which is kept safe in the divine realm. And same is with the hero. Because his real soul lives in his world, even if he dies he will go back to his world. The king tells about a magical item called, chain destruction. If used, both the heroes and the goddesses virtual and real souls will be destroyed forever. Rista is shocked to know that a magical item like this even exists. The king tells that the demon lord already possesses it and has produced a weapon out of it. He shows the weapon, God Eater which is a god slaying sword. Rista is shocked and wonders why he possesses such a thing. Suddenly, the king attacks Rista. By eliminating her, there would be no other way for the hero to go back to the divine realm. Surprised Rista asks the reason he is trying to kill them. The king explains, after standing in front of the demon lord, he was stunned to see the difference in their power levels. And since then decided to worship the demon lord. Before he can kill Rista, in a nick of time Seiya comes and saves her. He was cautious enough and know this could be a possibility. Rosalie witnesses her father trying to kill a goddess. She was in shock. The king uses demon spirit orb, and by using it he attained the power he had when he was in his prime. As they start to fight, Seiya uses the ultimate eternal sword attack. However, the king uses a custom to get adapt to the attack and easily throws away one of Seiya's swords. With no other options left, Seiya starts to remove all the heavy accessories he was saving up to fight against the demon lord. To see how heavy they are, Rista and everyone are shocked. But even with his speed doubled, Seiya is not able to defeat him. So, Rista asks Alulu to use haste on Seiya. Alulu tells that she is already using it on him from the start. It was then, Rista realizes that Seiya didn't say his catchphrase before coming here. The king cuts Seiya's right arm. Thinking he would win, he loses his arm too. Asking how is this even possible? Seiya explains, by using counter break which he learned from Valkyrie, he can return the exact damage he has received. Using, Phoenix thrust he finishes off the king. Rista heals Seiya's arm. The king turns back to his older version and starts crying. Seiya tells Rista to heal his wound too. Before the king dies, Seiya tells Rosalie to talk to him for the last time. But after what he has done, Rosalie is angry with him. Seiya slaps her and tells her, this is your last chance. No matter how evil he is, he still loves you. Rosalie starts crying and hugs him. After three days, his demise is announced to the public and Rosalie is throned as the new ruler. Back in town, Seiya wakes up after a long sleep. Because this time the fight was so close and intense. He wants to train more. But before he does, Seiya tells everyone to shop, while he looks for some herbs and later at night they can have some fun. Everyone is happy because they didn't expect a training freak to allow them to enjoy themselves. After shopping for tonight, Rista, Alulu, and Mash went back to their inn. They are surprised to see that Seiya still hasn't come back. So they went to herb, armor, and weapons shops to ask about Seiya. But they haven't seen anyone like him. So, as the last option Rista went to the Divine Realm to ask Ishtar about Seiya. When she went inside her room, he sees Arya crying by the window. Arya guides them to a secret place where all of the gods' souls are being kept. There Ishtar tells them about Seiya going alone to fight the Demon Lord. Rista couldn't believe a cautious personality like him can do this. Ishtar explains further that since the beginning, Seiya has always tried to protect his teammates. And even when he could have died for real against the Warmaster, he fought him to protect Rista. Ishtar shows that since they went to the Dragon Village, Seiya has achieved the maximum level. 
but due to his ultimate fake out still, Risto wasn't able to see through it. And with no other way to increase his stats, he decided to learn Valhalla Gate so he can fight the Demon Lord by himself. Rista is in shock. Because if a human uses it in the presence of chain destruction, he is bound to die. Ishtar shows them a different world, Nineforia, a level B world, which has been destroyed 100 years ago. It was the world that was given to Arya. There, Arya with Colt, Tiana, and Seiya tries to save the world. However, Seiya was so impatient that he didn't even come up with a plan and just attacks them, even if the enemy is way stronger than him. But even after just barely managing to defeat their enemies, they were able to reach the Demon Lord. At night, the day before they were planning to attack, Tiana requests Seiya to first gather information about the Demon Lord. But Seiya being an impatient hero, tells her that it would be fine. At the time of the fight, Seiya is barely able to kill the Demon Lord. Thinking they have saved the world, they started to celebrate. However, the Demon Lord is reborn and first eats Colt. Then Arya. The Demon Lord explains, that because he had two lives he was able to be reborn again. As the Demon Lord caught Tiana, he notices that she is pregnant. He understands that the baby is Seiya's. Seiya cries and begs the Demon Lord to spare them. But he killed them all. Back to the present, after seeing the truth, Rista is emotional. Ishtar explains that after Tiana died, she was reincarnated as Rista. And even though Seiya has no memories of them being together, his regrets are deeply embedded in his soul and that is why he tries to be as cautious as possible. Without wasting any time, Rista, Alulu, and Mash prepare to go and help Seiya in fighting the Demon Lord. By the time they reach the castle, Seiya and the Demon Lord are already fighting. Rista can feel the presence of chain destruction. Seiya calls Valhalla Gate and swallows up the Demon Lord. However, the Demon Lord transforms and tries to escape through the gate. Seiya synthesizes a sword made from the gate spike and attacks the Demon Lord with it. Now as compensation, Seiya's body starts to lose a lot of blood. Rista asks Ishtar to release all her divine powers. Ishtar warns Rista that she has already broken too many rules by directly teleporting to the Demon Lord's castle. And by asking to release her limit again, her status as a goddess will be taken. Rista agrees to receive any punishment and receives all her divine powers back. With the help of it, she is able to heal Seiya's wounds. However, the Valhalla Gate hasn't vanished yet. The Demon Lord breaks it and uses Judgment Zero. Rista is shocked because the power is so immense that it can destroy this world two times in a single strike. But before he releases his attack, Seiya uses another Valhalla Gate. This time, the gate is bigger. It swallows the Demon Lord along with the first gate. However this time Seiya's body starts to break. And Rista is unable to heal him because his body is breaking faster than she can heal him. Seiya just before he dies shows his gratitude towards Mash and Alulu. And at last just before he vanishes, he hugs Rista and thanks her for helping him. As the world is at peace, Mash and Alulu are working for Rosalie. And after bidding them farewell, Rista goes back to the Divine Realm. Rista starts to hallucinate. She checks the room where Seiya used to train, but he is not there. Arya comes in and tells Rista about her being called up by Ishtar. But before they went, Arya combs Rista's hair. When she meets Ishtar, for breaking many rules, Rista is given a punishment. And now she has to save an SS-class world, Nineforia which is already under the control of the Demon Lord. And if she is not able to save it she will be removed from her goddess status. Arya is emotional and begs Ishtar to not give such a cruel punishment to Rista. For a beginner goddess, an S-class was already too much, and now an SS-class is impossible to save with a normal hero. Ishtar tells Rista that after the second gate was summoned, the chain of destruction was also eaten alongside the demon lord and the first gate. Ishtar hands a paper containing a potential hero. Rista is stunned to see Seiya's name on it. With his stats reset, Ishtar allows Rista to summons him. However, this time the personality of Seiya is, beyond impossibly cautious. Consider liking and subscribing this channel if you enjoyed the recap. Have a wonderful day ahead.